Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Today, I am joined by actress and writer, best known for In Memory and Tennessee Gothic. I have Miss Jackie Kelly. Jackie, how are you doing today? Hi, I'm good. Thanks for having me. Oh, it, the pleasure is all mine. Uh, so I know things are kind of crazy right now with COVID. Quarantine's all kind of crazy. Um, you do got a pretty cool uh, project coming up. Uh, can we talk about that a little bit? Uh, you're talking about Seasons? Seasons, yep. Yeah, Seasons is a feature-length horror anthology. It stars a lot of, like, horror all-stars. It's got Felissa Rose, Reggie Bannister, all kinds of people. And uh, I will be playing in the summer segment, and I'm very much looking forward to it. I'm very flattered and honored to be a part of the project. Yeah, we're all excited. When I heard you were a part of it, I got super stoked because I've been following you for a while. And oh, it's cool. something I'm really proud to say that I'm having you here and knowing that you're a part of this project. And I'm a good friend with the guys at Subsoil Films. So to know that they were able to get you up as a part of this is awesome. And like you said, this movie is an all-star cast. So for you to join, it just ups the ante even that much more. So it's such an honor to know you're going to be a part of this awesome project that we're all going to be talking about. Yeah, I'm and, really uh, looking I'm forward to it. Yeah, I was lucky enough to get two tickets to the premiere when it comes out. So I'm so excited. I'm you know so excited I'll be there opening night. So awesome. Something, yeah, absolutely. Um, so In Memory and Tennessee Gothic, for people that haven't seen those, where are they able to watch these at? Uh, in Memory of, I believe you can buy and stream on Amazon. I don't think it's on Amazon Prime, but you can rent it, I think, for like three bucks. And okay. Tennessee Gothic, you can stream on Vimeo. And also, I believe the website is called gypsyrootproductions.com or gypsyroot.com. That's Jeff Wedding and Katie Groshong's website. You can buy the Blu-ray there. Okay. I got those links down here in the description for you guys so you guys can check it out. I promise you're going to love it just as much as you're going to love Seasons. It's something that I'm so excited about. This is I'm a big anthology person. Creep Show, Tales from the Hood. Tales from the Crypt. These are all things sure. that I grew up with. So it's something I'm very excited to see how you guys all make this happen together. And it's going to be very exciting to watch this come into fruition. So but yeah, that was one of the things I liked about the script was it very much like had creep show vibes to me. And that's I'm oh. glad you're part of it. So I don't want to give away too much because obviously it's seasons, right. but you guys are going to really dig what these guys are doing here. They're putting a lot of hard work into it. Um, I will also have the Indiegogo down here. If you want to help out, you got some cool perks that could come your way. So make sure you're helping out, support your indie filmmakers as hard as we're all struggling. They're struggling too. And they're still trying to entertain us and make these amazing films. So as much as we can help them, something we should be honored to help do. And you get cool perks for doing it. So we really would appreciate your guys' help. And Jackie, we are here today to talk about the first horror movie that you ever watched. What got you really started into the horror genre? And your first horror movie was? Evil Dead 2. What an amazing, amazing movie to start with. Because yeah. it's no secret, everybody that knows me knows that Evil Dead 2 is my favorite of the Evil Dead franchise. So I think this is the perfect blend of horror and comedy. Uh, do you remember about how old you were the first time you watched it? I want to say I was probably about 12-ish. My dad's a horror fan, and Evil Dead 2 is like his favorite horror film. It's probably in his top three favorite films of all time, and he I made sure why. to start us out on that pretty young. So. <laughs> so when you think back to Evil Dead 2, which scene do you think affected you the most? Which scene? It's hard to say with Evil Dead 2, because like when I think of the film... I don't think of it in terms of like specific scenes because just like the sound design and the cutting pace, it very much feels like a symphony, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Oh, but yeah. I mean, I just, when I think of Evil Dead 2, I specifically think of like how physical Bruce Campbell's performance is. Like as an actor, I'm so incredibly inspired by him because he just like beat the hell out of himself to make that movie work. And he's just, I mean, what, what horror fan doesn't love Bruce Campbell? I mean, he's one right. of the fans, so. He is. He's one of those. And he's a, if you're into the horror genre at all, you know Bruce Campbell. Right. You know who he is. You know what he's about. And I'm so excited for Evil Dead Rise. You know, knowing him and Sam Raimi have a part of that. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be absolutely amazing, too. And I got to ask, have you seen Evil Dead the musical? I have not. There's a local theater company in St. Louis where I live that puts on the, the musical every year and I still haven't seen it. I really want to. 
you gotta see it. It's heard so it much fun. Yeah. Just if you get to see it, make sure you go really early so that way you can get in the splatter zone. That's what I've get heard. Blood and stuff. Get yeah, it's so rad. Yeah. So, so rad. Really um, cool. So when, when someone talks about Evil Dead 2, I know you said Bruce Campbell, but what do you think the first thing that really pops into your head is about Evil Dead 2? The first thing that pops into my head. Hmm. Well, one of the things I always remember because my mom, so me and my dad and my brother, the three of us are all big horror fans, right? And my mom is not so much. She's learning. She's starting to get into like Jordan Peele stuff and whatnot. But um, for years, every time me or my dad or my brother would talk about a horror film, my mom would go, oh, is that the one where the head rolls down the lady's shoulder? <laughs> and we'd be like, no, ma, that's, that's Evil Dead too." So like that scene does always stick out to me because it's like, it's my mom's like basis for like any horror film. And I just find sure. that really comical. But yeah, like I said, there's just like, it, I feel like the film works best as a whole and not on a scene by scene basis, but it's all good. It's all super good. I mean, I love the stuff of Bruce Campbell, like dragging himself by his hand and just like the artistry that it took for like him to play the character of his hand while playing the character of Ash, that's just like phenomenal performing and it's unforgettable. And with Bruce Campbell too, like you were saying, like this movie, it's the perfect movie to start off with for your first horror movie because this isn't just like grab you by the throat, rip your heart out, scary horror. This does have a little bit of comic relief to it. So as someone right. who's just starting in the genre, you're going to, you know, who doesn't laugh every time you see Bruce Campbell with the lamp? Right. You know, like, we, you know, like, I love that. And right. like I said, I think this is the perfect Evil Dead film. I think Army of Darkness is too slapsticky, too action adventure, not enough horror. And mm -hmm. I think Evil Dead is just too, it, for what it was trying to do, it was too horror, I guess. But Evil Dead 2 really took that and ran with it and made it exactly what they wanted to make it. Right. It's um, like, it's, it's a, like, its own subgenre, basically. Like, there's, there's really nothing else out there like it it's so hyper stylized that i think that's why it's become like one of the most memorable cult horror films of all time well i you know i own it you know Hell like this yeah. is thing that you know I, i'm it's one of like i'm with you it's one of it's in my top 10 favorite horror movies for sure and it's one of those things where it's almost i don't know if you would call it a remake or a reboot but if you watch Evil Dead 1 and Evil Dead 2, it's more of a reboot of Evil Dead 1 than it right. is a sequel. Absolutely. But I do love Evil Ash in the movie, too. I think that that's, yeah. I love how you can still tell it's Bruce Campbell and with the foggy eyes. I love Evil Ash. I don't think Evil Ash gets talked about enough. Yeah, it's, so. it's all, it's, it's such a good franchise in general, but I agree with you on, um, I think the first one is, really inspiring for like independent filmmakers people that don't know how to start because you watch the film and it and it feels like something like oh I could make this you know mm -hmm. what I mean but I think having a little bit more of a budget and having like Sam Raimi having more of his voice in the second one like really makes it the perfect film yeah and Sam Raimi is just He's brilliant. I still love like some of the horror stuff he does today. Like I thought, you know, he was involved in Crawl, the alligator movie. I thought that was awesome. I can see that. Um, I love it. I love it so much. And I'm a even though everybody else, I don't think I've ever met anybody else that really liked it. I'm a really <laughs> big fan of Drag Me to Hell. Have you seen Drag I Me to Hell? I really liked Drag Me to Hell. I thought it was funny. I thought it was like in a really similar vein as Evil Dead. And then it I had really that heartbreaking it. ending to it. Like yeah. I, I'm with you. I love Drag Me to Hell. Um, with Evil Dead 2, I do want to ask as well, which kill is, I always talk about the kills, obviously, um, which kill in that movie do you think affected you the most? Which kill affected me the most? I mean, I love the blood coming out of the crawl space, or not the crawl space, the, the cellar. Yeah. That's, that's pretty iconic. Uh, what about you? What's your I, I like the redneck dude that died. It's just so quick. But with the when the hand gets him in the back with the Kandarian okay. dagger, mm -hmm. you know, and because you, you're rooting like you you root for this guy, but at the same time, 
you're like, this guy's kind of an asshole. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, so that's one of those deaths where you're like, oh, but okay, I get it. You know, right. <laughs> that's how I always felt. Um, we've talked about Evil Dead 2 a little bit, your first horror movie. Now I gotta go scream on you here. What's your favorite scary movie, Jackie? So my- what is your favorite horror movie? Uh, oh my god. I know that's I never tell people I'm gonna ask them that question just because I want a genuine response to it. I don't want you to have time to think about it. I want to put you on the spot and just know what horror movie, when I see is your favorite, is the first one that pops into your brain. I would have to say Toby Hooper's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's one of the... uh, Sorry? The 78 one? Yeah. Yeah. Um, It's one of the scariest movies I've ever seen. It scared me the first time I saw it. It still scares me. Marilyn Burns in my opinion, is the ultimate screen queen. You know, she really, when she's in fear, you feel it. When you watch all of the characters in that film, you feel how uncomfortable the shooting conditions were. You know, it was like middle of summer in Texas and it was so freaking hot. And you see that in the film and it's just, it's so gritty and it's, it's just beautiful, you know. I, that image of her at the end in the back of the pickup truck, you know, and laughing. Her, yeah, it's just, it's so good. And I would have to say that's that's probably my favorite. I think it's really interesting because Texas Chainsaw Massacre is absolutely held up as one of the most famous horror films ever. But when you just watch it as a film, it's very like non-conventional. It's very, I have always viewed it as very much of an art film in just mm-hmm. in its execution. And it, you know, I, I just, I love Toby Hooper in general. I know that like sure. everybody like talks about, you know, John Carpenter and Ramiro and Wes Craven. And I love all those guys, but personally I'm a Toby, Toby Hooper girl. And well, I think and he's, he's extremely them- underrated. He's extremely underrated. I say that all the time, even though he's made like one of the most famous horror films ever. He's made so many other great movies like Mm -hmm. Fun House and Eaten Alive. Have you seen Eaten Alive? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I love it. And it's it's funny you say that because I have this talk all the time about how Toby Hooper is an underrated um, director. And Mm -hmm. people are like, well, you know, he's done this and this. But I'm also the person that says, Queen is an underrated band and people are like what Queen's huge I'm like dude think about it think about every good record that Queen put out and every great song they had that weren't singles and yet you talk to everybody and all they talk about is either Bohemian Rhapsody Killer Queen which again Bohemian Rhapsody is one of my favorite songs of all time Mm -hmm. but I feel the same about Toby Hooper as I do Queen yeah people know him and they know how great he was but they don't really dig down to the extent of how great he was. Right. They stick to the radio singles right. or the you know the main movies, but they don't get down to the nitty gritty of how amazing this person really was. And while we're talking about that, Texas Chainsaw, three things I always talk about. One, you took the words out of my mouth, the scream queen, because that dinner table scene, mm-hmm. I believe that was only shot in like two or three takes at the most. And she's just, you know, screaming that whole time. It's such an uncomfortable scene. Two, that movie is not. And your memory always makes it seem like it's worse than it was. That movie is not bloody. It's At not gory. Yeah. Like it's funny. Cause when I rewatched it as an adult, I was like, man, this is a lot tamer than I remember yeah, it. It's, it's very PG and it's gore. Yeah. That's what makes it awesome. And then the, you were talking about characters. Like you feel every one of these characters, even as an older brother, you've got the immature. Right. But like stuff like that, like right. I'm with you. As much as this is a great horror film, it is an art film as well. Like they took a lot into this movie. And from the first time you see Leatherface come out that door and then just slam the door, you're just like, what the fuck was that thing? Like it's so great and so amazing. Um, I had to get this actually. Oh, you know, cool. Just, yeah, that's my leather face apron you know it's even got the we slaughter barbecue family owned and operated since 74 that's awesome yeah so i'm a huge texas chainsaw fan i'm glad that we were able to talk about that a little bit too now i do always end these with a skull count we'll go back to evil dead 2 we're ranking that on a skull count zero being the worst 
five being the best, you can use half and quarter skulls. What is your ranking of Evil Dead 2? Is that like a star? Or is it yep. like how scary it is? Or just like, like how, how, how well you, how good you think the movie is? I'm going to go with a 4.5 skulls. Cutting one Four skull in half and putting yep. it on the rack. Mm -hmm. No, I, I think that's a very fair ranking um, for what Evil Dead 2 was and what they tried to get rid of from the first one and put into the second one. Like Sam Raimi's talked openly about how he really, really is not a fan anymore of the tree scene from part one. And that's something he really wanted to do away with in part two. I mean, and that scene is so controversial. This movie got banned in countries because of right. the tree scene alone, Evil Dead 1. And I'm also one of those people. I do want to ask you one more question. Your opinions on the Evil Dead reboot from 2000 i think it was 13 all right i know that most people really loved it mm -hmm. i don't think it would have i would have liked it if it didn't call itself evil dead i just thought that tonally it was nothing like evil dead it just just make it another film that, about a cabin in a woods and a demonic presence i just a combination of this, how serious it took itself and Bruce Campbell not being Ash. I just, yeah. I was not into it. There are certain films that I just feel like you cannot remake because they are so distinct. Like I remember, I don't know how long ago, and maybe it's still a thing, but I remember hearing a while back that, you know, there were, there was rumor of a toxic Avenger remake. I don't know if this is still a thing, but I was just like, how do you remake toxic avenger because it's like not like a sequel like the sequel some of the sequels are great but like a remake right. of that it's just like so incredibly stylized and specific and bizarre like i just i i don't think so, some of these films need a remake and that's how i felt about evil dead i don't think lloyd i couldn't imagine lloyd kaufman signing off on a toxic avenger remake that's why yeah, it, just it might have just been a rumor but every once in a while you hear about one of these films getting a remake and you're just like, this is like far too special of a film to right. warrant someone else taking it on. I don't know. Well, the one complaint I had about the Evil Dead reboot was the same thing as you about the Ash thing. You can't make remake A Nightmare on Elm Street without Freddy Krueger. You right. can't remake right. Gremlins without Gizmo. You know, right. you can you, that that doesn't work. But for what the film was, I did enjoy it very much. Um I thought that some of the comedy they had in there, you know, like when the girl's like, why does my face hurt? And Lou Taylor Pucci just starts laughing in the background, you know, like little things like that I thought were good. And I did think it was a good movie, but I can respect and understand where you're coming from too. If they would have just named it, you know, something else, I, I, I would have totally dug it too. Cause what I liked about this movie is they made it smart where they weren't just, Hey, let's go out and party in the woods. Like they were taking her out to the woods to get clean. Right. You know, they didn't have their cell phones because they were trying to get her off drugs. So I did like the premise of that, but I do understand that, and respect where you're coming from too. That was another one of my qualms with it actually. And I would normally never say this about a film because I like the idea of, you know, a reboot switching a male character to a female character but in the case of evil dead i don't think that ash should be a female and that's specifically because the approach that sam raimi took with the evil dead movies i feel like is so much harping on like macho-ness and like manliness you know what i mean like bruce campbell is just a man you know he's just like this stereotypical like He's just this trope and it's funny. And like, I think that's so much what works about Evil Dead 2 is this ridiculous trope of masculinity. Yeah. And that was another reason it just didn't quite work for me. I don't know. See, and I thought that Lou Taylor Pucci's character was going to be the Ash character because when they got there, you know, he had the glasses, he was the nerdy guy, and mm -hmm. he found the Necronomicon. Like, I totally thought he was going to, because if you remember in the first Evil Dead, Ash was nowhere near a badass in the first Evil Dead. Right. Like, he was this timid little wuss dude that kind of and i thought that that's what they were going to do with lou taylor pucci they're going to take him and make him you know build him up to be a badass at the end curveball to me but that's how it goes sometimes um so out of the evil dead franchise this is the last question i know i said the last question a couple minutes no, ago but i've had a lot of fun talking to you out of the evil dead franchise we got evil dead one evil dead two dead by dawn army of darkness and then the evil dead reboot which is your favorite of the franchise evil dead two 
always. I'm, I completely agree with you. <laughs> like, I agree. It's the perfect movie. Like, it's so fun. And it's it's one of those movies that I could watch over and over and over again. And right. you find something new every time. You know, the little things. Even the, the kid in me still laughs when he's chasing his hand. And his hand gives him the bird and then goes right. into the wall. You know, the child in me still laughs my ass off at that part every time. Because you knew it was going to happen eventually. You knew eventually that hand was going to give him the bird. So this is something I love. Um Jackie, don't go anywhere. I got a couple more questions for you off air. Everybody else, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you're clicking the links down here in the description. Follow Jackie on social media and make sure you're checking out some of the films that she's done. Get ready for seasons. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. Keep talking horror. Stay what you are. And we'll see you guys soon.